Hello, everybody. Dr. Lennon here, broadcasting you to you live. Okay. Question for today's assignment was the ever popular Big Mac Index. Thank you, The Economist. It's a uh, business magazine uh, coming out of uh, England. It's over, I think it's like well over 170 years now it's been published. It's quite good. And it has uh, funny English spellings like program, P R O P R O G R A M M E, instead of P R O G R A M. It's an interesting read. A number of years ago, they came up with this concept called the Big Mac Index. It was an attempt to explain uh, or uh, currency valuations in the context of what's called the PPP, or Purchasing Power Parity Theory. Say that five times fast, people. All right. Before we go further, let's first talk about PPP, as we say. All right. Here's basically the theory. The theory is the following that anywhere you go in the world, the same good or service, okay, that's how economists like to talk, good or service, same good, uh, consumable, say, should cost, if the same ingredients and the same work goes into it, should cost the same everywhere in the world when adjusted, even when adjusted to the local currency. Okay, so let me explain this. Say this bottle of water, right? Let's just say uh, how much it costs and then what it's being sold for is now uh, one US dollar, okay? Well, let's just say we go across the border to Canada and let's say in Canada, every Canadian dollar is worth only uh, 50 cents, 50 cent uh, US, okay? So that means for every one US dollar, you get two Canadian dollars. You're with me so far? So that would mean the same bottle of water that costs one US dollar here in the US should, in Montreal, if the exchange rate is uh, 50 cents, uh, 50 cent Canadian to one US dollar, should cost two Canadian dollars in Canada. We got it so far? Say a buck in the US, two Canadian over there. That's if it stays the same price of a dollar a dollar all the way across. Now, why the Big Mac Index? Well, you know, the economists, they're English, they like to make fun of America, so hey. And in addition, is a Big Mac, a Big Mac, a Big Mac everywhere you go in the world? Um, yeah, pretty much, gang. Uh, been to Dubai one time, and a uh, fascinating place. Uh, in the airport, literally, you could buy a Happy Meal in seven different currencies that they would update every 15 minutes to fluctuate for the prices. When I travel, I like to carry a little bit of cash. Uh, this is about oh, 15 years ago, and a bit of cash from, you know, like pounds. I had euros. I had yen on me, all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, the young lady I was traveling with uh, basically was ready to smack me over the head when I'm doing arbitrage over, you know, what to pay for the fries versus the happy meal. But enough of that. In the case of this situation, let's turn to the spreadsheet that they had you download. Now, does this look confusing? Yes, needlessly so. Here's what I want you to pay attention to. First off, you know what this is. This is all the countries. That was easy. Okay? Next, the Big Mac price. This is in the local currency. Okay? Hint, do not touch this. Do not touch this. Some of you guys have been asking me, oh, Professor, do I change these? No. The only thing for this assignment I want you to change is column C. I want you to update the exchange rates. All right, and here's how we're going to do it. Okay, we see for the very first one, we see, well, okay, back up to that. To see how this works, go down here in the United States. Local currency, $4.80. They really should have used the symbols. This is why you're freaking out when you see local currency. You know, you're not sure what it, what it should be. But here, U.S. foreign currency, one, okay, this is one to one because it's one dollar to one dollar. Okay, Big Mac price, $4.80, one to one. So the over, under, the valuation, no difference. It's a zero percentage. So let me show you how it's going to work. Okay. All right. 
okay. We can see um, these are annoying that they're in the way, but let's see if we can get them out of the way for us. Okay. All right. First thing part of your assignment is go ahead and save this spreadsheet locally. Next, save a copy to work on it. Next, go down through C and update all of these. If you want to work as a team to get gather this data, go right ahead. I'm perfectly acceptable, but you have to submit individually. How to find the exchange things quickly, especially if you don't know what the currency is known as, here's cool. Hey, your professor doesn't know, well, he knows most of them, but he doesn't know the name of uh, all of the currencies uh, here. So like Costa Rica, go to Google, God bless Google, go one US dollar in Costa Rica money. And guess what it gives me? Colon. Now we know. 532.44. 53, so take that information, go back through our spreadsheet. Costa Rica. Donde esta, senor? Oh, wow. Oh, no. Don't mess up, guys. 532.4. Okay. What did that change? Negative 15.8. Alright, well, what does that tell us? Well, if everything were equally priced, all right, what we're saying is if we were buying Big Macs in Costa Rica with dollars and we had to convert our dollars into Costa Rican Colon, okay, we'd be basically getting a 16% discount on these burgers, okay, because they should be costing one to one, right? You know, they should be costing, uh, you know, they should be costing uh, whatever the US price of. Uh, what four dollars and eighty cents? They should be costing four dollars and eighty cents times the uh, five hundred whatever for the uh, Costa Rican money, but that's not happening. All right, so let's do another one. Okay, Japan. That's an easy one. That's Japanese yen, by the way. Trust me, I know this one. But again, if you're not sure, just go one U.S. dollars in. Well, let's try even just uh, see. Look, it even solves it for you. Japanese yen, great. Okay, 120.05. So what does that tol uh, tol uh, told us, tells us actually? Since the time that this thing was made, the Japanese yen has gotten a lot weaker. So let's see how that plays out. Okay, uh, notice here, 370, 101, 101, 53, negative 24, so what was it, 120? Gosh, that's, I wonder why. Japanese friends are not traveling. Negative 35.7. This explains a lot why McDonald's is not very profitable in uh, Japan right now. Why? They might be selling burgers, but when they convert their profits back to dollars to bring them back to the U.S., they're all having problems. So, I don't know. Let's pick another one. Uh, I don't know. Turkey. Okay. They're lira. I do know that. I have a good, very dear Turkish colleague. And... Okay, Turkish, uh, and you can see it solves for us, Turkish Lira, 2.57, okay, we go back to it, and you can see 2.57. Do we notice a trend here, guys? The trend is that the value of the U.S. dollar is going up. Is that good for us as tourists who want to buy burgers in... Uh, who want to buy bur uh, a McDonald's hamburgers overseas, sure, because they've become cheaper for us, okay? Um, if we're, you know, taking U.S. dollars and trading them. Is that bad for, uh, uh, for U.S. exporters, though? Yes, it is, because it makes our goods to export more expensive, okay? All right, guys, try your best with this. I just want you to get a sense of this and, uh, you know, see if you, you need to, you know, fill these, these puppies out and come up with uh, three of them that you notice uh, do a little bit of analysis on, okay? And if you want to help each other out and actually doing the data crunching to, uh, you know, go to Google and find out all the answers uh, to plug them in and then do your own analysis, go right ahead. All right, gang, shoot me an email if you got any questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.